Are e-bikes expensive? It's a question we get asked frequently here on EMBN. Actually, sometimes we get told that e-bikes are expensive, which can be quite difficult to feel sometimes. Now, these two beauties here certainly are not inexpensive, but as we'll find out, once you get into the nitty gritty, all is not what it seems. The cost of a bike is relative to each of us, but don't forget what value can you attach to fun? Because let's face it, an e-mountain bike can offer you so much more than a mountain bike, and it's not limited in the places you can ride it, such as a motocross or enduro bike. But it's true, bikes are expensive. A Pinarello Dogma will cost you 12 grand, and you can only ride that on tarmac. But before we talk e-bikes, let's have a look at what different prices offer you on a traditional mountain bike. Now, spending more money on a mountain bike will give you such things as lighterweight components and carbon fiber products. Now, I'm gonna suggest that if you are spending more money, then you should be getting a performance advantage. Or is it just an object of desire, such as a platinum ring versus a gold one? I'll just let you think on that one. So to answer the question then, do higher priced products such as carbon fiber give you increased performance? Well, not necessarily. And that's because you cannot make sweeping generalizations because after all, brands vary in their skill set and their ability to make good products. So if we're talking money then, does an e-bike give you a performance advantage over a traditional mountain bike? Yes, massively, because an e-bike can potentially allow you to do twice the amount of riding. And what is that if not a performance advantage? Now the things that cost more on a traditional mountain bike are not necessarily things that you need or will give you increased performance on an e-mountain bike. A lighter cassette, derailleur, crank or seat post, these grams really don't matter as much on an e-bike. But let's get away from performance for just a minute, although I'm sure you can't really disagree. Now e-bikes actually can be expensive. However, some people comment that they're too expensive. So are they? Let's start off then by looking at what hardware you get on an e-mountain bike that you don't on a mountain bike. First of all, a motor. Now, can you put a value on that? Possibly five to 600 pounds. And then a battery, about a thousand pounds for a 700 watt hour specialized, or maybe four to 500 pounds for a Shimano battery. And then of course, there's the software, which differs from brand to brand, but has a huge effect on the motor feel. And finally, a display, which gives you a huge amount of data. And this is the kind of thing you simply will not get on a mountain bike. From this then, we can already see you're getting so much more than a mountain bike. So how then do you measure performance on an e-bike? Well, let's start off with reliability. And then what about more power, which will allow you to do some crazy climbs or maybe less power. Maybe some people want a lightweight system. And then of course, there's that long range battery, which will allow you to do much more riding. For some people, it's all about good software and a more natural feeling e-bike. Silence is key, and which means a lot to some people, definitely a performance advantage there. And then of course, there's the ease at which a bike can pedal past 25 kilometers an hour. Definitely gonna be an advantage in flatter areas. And then of course, there's weight. Now there comes a point where all things being equal in terms of motor and components, where if one bike weighs 30 kilos and another weighs 20, there's obviously gonna be a slight advantage. But I just want to point out that in a system where the bike weighs 20 kilos and say the rider weighs 80, then one kilo is not really going to make that much difference, let alone 100 grams.
So as you can see then, the aspects of e-mountain biking are actually quite different to those of mountain biking. And some items with a high perceived value in mountain biking shouldn't really factor in e-mountain biking. So what's on the market then in terms of e-mountain bikes? Well, I suppose you could argue that if you're after a traditional mountain bike, there probably is much more range. For example, a specialized stump jumper will start at around 1,800 pounds and top out at 9,800 pounds. That's simply not the case for an e-mountain bike. And how about then if you want to spend under 1,000 pounds? Well, for under a thousand pounds, you're probably looking at hub drive bikes rather than mid drive bikes. You guys stay there. Uh, bikes with probably uh, very basic components and ones made more for commuting and smooth fire roads. You want to follow me now? Between a thousand and two thousand pound, now we move from hub drive to mid drive, and they certainly are much more capable off road. You'll probably be looking at front suspension and better components. But like I said, that mid drive really will allow you some great adventures ahead, even though it might be a hard tail. Now above £2,000 and we're getting into proper full suspension territory and usually with better componentry too, but certainly a bike that is made for off-road riding. Bikes then such as the Canyon Spectralon with six different options ranging from £3,000 to £5,000. Now you're going to get better componentry, better geometry and also better sizing. Maybe then the base level of this bike at about £3,079 could be one of the least expensive full suspensions on the market. Let us know in the comments below. Up to £5,000 and you usually see bikes that have got larger capacity batteries which give you more range. It's also the transition point between an alloy bike and a carbon fiber one. That's certainly the case with bikes such as the Norco Sight, where £5,000 is that barrier between alloy and carbon. Nevertheless, you can still get bikes such as the Radon Render, which is carbon fiber. It's got a fourth generation Bosch motor and a large capacity battery. Now get above £5,000 and we begin to look at bikes with full carbon frame and wheels and of course possibly a large capacity battery. Bikes then such as the Specialized Levo. Now in the UK I think you can only get four options of the Levo, whereas a bike which is similar in travel but it's not an e-bike, the Stump Jumper, you can get 14 versions starting about £1,800 up to £10,000. So maybe the argument is more about options. So in the final analysis, are e-mountain bikes expensive? Well, what is the difference between a top-end e-mountain bike compared to a top-end mountain bike? Well, actually, not that much when you look at frame materials and componentry, except that is you're getting so much more on an e-mountain bike. The motor, the battery, the display, and of course, the software. But what do you guys think? Are e-mountain bikes expensive? Let us know in the comments down below. But don't forget to follow us on social media and give us a thumbs up if you like this video.